Okay, let's click on File, Add New. And we can create a new file, 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters is fine. It's square, so the orientation doesn't matter. And we can leave it at Artboard 1 and click on Create. So the first thing that we need to do is just grab the circle tool. So if I left click and hold on the shape tool, I can select ellipse. So I can left click and drag to draw an ellipse and hold down the shift key while I'm dragging to make sure that it's a perfect ellipse. Or I'll press Ctrl and Z to undo that. If I simply left click, uh, Illustrator will ask me what size do I want my ellipse to be. So I could say that I want it to be 30 by 30. So I know that it's perfectly round. Click on OK, um, and then we have a circle that is filled with white and has a black stroke. So I'm going to make a copy of this, and the quickest way to do that is to hold down the Alt or Option key if you're on a Mac and just drag it. And um, I'm just going to make sure that they intersect there, so they're overlapping halfway. Uh, and then I want to repeat that, so I'm going to select all of those guys again. I have both of them selected. I'm going to hold down the Alt key left click and drag. I'm also holding on the shift key and that's going to keep it in exactly in position. So you can see right in the middle there where I've got that pink line. When I move it up to there, I get the intersect. So I know that each one of these circles is like halfway in between. The edge of this is right into the center point of that one there. Uh, so I basically just have four circles arranged in a very particular way. Um, so I'm going to select them all and then I'm going to use the Pathfinder tool, so this one over here. And if you don't see Pathfinder, um, you can go to Window and click on Pathfinder, and that will open it for you. And you can, of course, drag these things around and reposition them uh, and set up things the way that you like them to be. Um, but I'll just bring it over here just for our purposes. So what Pathfinder does is it joins paths together. So if I have two paths here, I have the two circles, if I selected those and I pressed on this button here to unite them, it'll actually just join it into one. So I press Ctrl and Z to undo. But what I want to do with these four is to kind of create a more interesting geometric shape. I'm going to select, drag to select all of them, and then I'm going to click on Divide. And what that does is it um, basically breaks the shapes apart wherever they overlap with each other. Uh, but what it also does once you divide it is it puts it into a group. So you can see when I've moved it there, it moved everything. So Command and Z to undo that. If I select the object and I right click and say ungroup, and then I just click away, it will now let me select the individual objects here. So uh, this might be more apparent if I select them all and just change the fill color to maybe just a orange color, maybe this one. So if I drag these apart, you can see that each one of these is now an individual shape. So it's been divided. So I can press Ctrl and Z a couple of times to put that back together. Um, and then I can be selective about which ones I actually want to delete. So I could maybe start deleting um, this, 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 and maybe the centerpiece to kind of create a more interesting geometric pattern. So uh, if I left click and drag to select all of those, what I want to do is turn off the stroke. So if I click over here to bring the stroke to the foreground and then I click on none, that will turn off the stroke for me. Okay, so I can close the Pathfinder window now. Um, the next thing that I want to do is actually turn this into a, a full on pattern. So I'm just going to left click and select all of the objects there that I want to make a pattern from. And I'm going to come up to my menu at the top and click on object pattern and make and I'll get a little dialog box popping up that says a new pattern has been added to the swatches panel. Over here on the right hand side you see the swatches panel and we can just about make out the new swatch that's been added there. Um, so any changes made in the pattern editing mode will be applied to the swatch upon exit. So any, any edits that we're about to make are going to get saved into that swatch over there in the swatch palette. We can of course turn on don't show again because once we understand that we don't need to be reminded of every time. But what happens now is that we're once we click OK, we're actually inside of the pattern making mode. And you can see up here along this top bar here, um, it says save a copy, done or cancel. So, and we get this new little dialog box popping up, popping up automatically. So pattern options. 
Um, I'm going to leave all of these things as the default. We'll get into what each of them do in, in a subsequent video. Uh, but I'll just leave it for the moment and just click on done. And when I do, the pattern basically just disappears. Um, so I'm going to left click and drag and just move my object off the pasteboard for a moment. And then I am going to create another uh, object. So I just get my rectangle tool here. And if I left click and drag, I'm just going to get a big orange box here because you can see in my colors here, my foreground colors uh, or my fill color is orange. But I can come over to my swatch palette and I can apply um, the swatch that we created, the pattern swatch, which is now saved inside this document. OK, so it's only this document that that swatch is saved into. We can copy and move it and import it to other documents if we want. But at the moment, that swatch is only saved inside this document. So you'll notice that the, the scale of the, the pattern is actually quite large. And if I resize that box, even if I zoom out, if I press con control and minus a couple of times just to zoom out, and you can, if I extend this past my pasteboard, you'll see that the pattern just gets a little bit larger. Um, so I'll just bring that back in. So sometimes you might actually want to adjust your pattern afterwards. So I'm going to go to object and then down to transform and I'm not getting anything here because I've still not selected anything to transform. So now that I have my object selected, I can go to object, transform, and now I have the options activated here. And I'm gonna click on scale and it's gonna bring up a dialog box and whatever, the last time I use the scale, it will have all those numbers inside of it. That's why it's changed this and I have my preview turned on. So it's basically applying this uh, setting already. I'm gonna change this over to uniform and the scale I want it to be, uh, we'll just put it at 100 for now. I'll press tab. Um, and then I'm just going to change some of the settings down here under the options. I'm going to turn off scale, stroke and effects and turn off transform objects. I'm just going to leave on transform patterns. And now when I start changing this from 100% to anything other, so you can see there I've just highlighted that and I'm actually just pressing the down arrow on my keypad so I can actually change the scale of my pattern like that so I can bring it down to or back up so if I leave it at about 35% that should be okay and then click on okay and that's my pattern there so one thing that you need to be aware of is when you actually resize the box the object that the fill pattern has been applied to so you can see here as I resize my box uh, it goes beyond the confines of the page and onto the pasteboard and the pattern just grows to fill that space um, but sometimes what, what you might find after you've scaled something so if I press ctrl and z ctrl and z go back and we'll just do that scale thing again so object transform and scale and I'll keep it uniform and I won't scale the object I'll just scale the patterns and we'll just drop it to maybe 60% tab and click on ok um, so this time if I resize now, you'll see that the object is actually getting squishy and squashy. So it's out of proportion. So I'll press Ctrl and Z, Ctrl and Z to undo those two steps. And when I have the object selected, uh, if I have applied a scale to it, sometimes it will change how it's transformed. And I can change the settings again. I can click on this little transform button here and then click on this tiny little button in the top right hand corner at the menu. And you'll see there that it, it's currently set to transform both. So I have transformed the object, which is the square, and then transformed the pattern, which is the fill swatch that's been applied to it. So if I just turn on transform object only instead of transform both, so I'll switch to this. Now when I resize my objects, it reverts back to the way that I, I would expect it to. Okay, so now that I have my pattern, I can still go in and actually make changes to the pattern then as well. So we have our object here that we've made the pattern from, but we're, the pattern is now independent of this object because it's been turned into a swatch over here. So if I just double click on the swatch, it brings me back inside of the pattern editing mode where I can actually make some, some simple changes. So maybe if I just selected some of these objects like this one, this one, sorry, hold on the shift key, or this one and this one, and just change the color of those to something like that. So I get something very different. And then I click on done. You'll see that it's updated the pattern here. Maybe if I come to my swatches panel and I'll just go here 
and just say large thumbnail view so you can actually get a better chance of seeing this so it's updated the pattern there so the pattern swatch has actually changed so you can see the departure from my original object here so if I double click on that again I'll go back into the pattern mode and um, I'm editing this pattern here okay so let's make some more changes so if I just grab all of these maybe if I hold down the shift key while I click on each one of those orange objects and just change them all to maybe uh, a pink um, if I click on save a copy up here it'll ask me do I want to name it I'll just stick with new pattern 2 and click on OK and then uh, it'll give me the same dialog box saying that a new pattern has been added to this watch panel and we can see it pop in there and I click on OK. Now now you just need to be careful at this point here because remember we're still inside editing this one. So if I actually click on done, what's going to happen is I'll just get two of the same pattern there. So if I press Ctrl and Z to go back in there, um, we're back to editing this pattern here. So I click on save a copy and click on new pattern 2, yes a new one has been added, that's okay. And at this time I'm just going to cancel out of editing my original one because I've saved a copy of this one here, so I can click on cancel. And now I have two pattern swatches. So this one here, then again I could just, if I hold down the shift key and just resize that, and then I hold down the alt key and drag that across, and now I can apply the other new pattern to this. And again, we can go in there and edit uh, everything again. So I can double click on either one of those patterns to go back into the pattern editing mode. Um, and then I can do things like maybe if I switch all of these instead of being filled. Um, sorry, we'll have to. If I hold down the shift key and select all of those and swap the fill and the stroke on them, and then hold down the shift key and select all of those and swap the fill and the stroke so we actually get an outline and um, we'll click on save a copy and new pattern 3 is fine and it's warning us that we've added a new pattern um, that's, I'm, I'm actually going to click don't show again and click on OK and we can see that we have uh, added the new swatch over there but I'm still editing this one slightly to the left of it so I'm just going to cancel editing now that I've saved a copy so I'll just cancel because I do want to keep this one and then again, I'll just left click and drag these over and make it a little bit smaller. And then if I alt click and drag this one, I can then apply that pattern to that then as well. So you can see from just some a, a simple circle, just moving things around and making some changes, you can actually start to generate some rather complex patterns then.